Okay, so welcome to this tutorial where we're going to look at connected particles passing over smooth pulleys. And in each of these questions we're going to look at the magnitude of the resultant force on the pulley exerted by the string. And throughout these questions I'm going to assume that you're happy finding the tensions in the strings. If you're not, then just go to our website www.examsolutions.co.uk Look in the tutorials for connected particles and I've given a few examples where I calculate tensions. OK, so on that basis then, we start off here with a simple diagram where I've got a smooth pulley and two particles attached to a string passing over the pulley. Now if we look at the forces acting on the pulley by the string we have two downward forces. We have one down here which is tension which I'm going to say is T newtons and because it's a smooth pulley the tensions in the string will be exactly the same. So these two tensions are going to exert a force in the downward direction, so somewhere in that direction. So in order to keep this in equilibrium, there must be another force supporting this acting upwards, which I'm going to just say is R newtons. So R newtons will be equal but opposite to the force that the two tensions supply going downwards. So to work out R I'm just going to resolve upwards and by resolving upwards we've got R and then the two T's act vertically downwards in the opposite direction so that would be minus 2T and this represents the overall resultant force on the pulley but because it's in equilibrium that resultant force will be zero. So rearranging the equation we get that R equals 2T. So therefore the magnitude of the force that the two tensions give on the pulley will be 2T. OK, so let's just move on to another question, one that is quite common. And I've drawn a diagram here where we have two particles, again attached by a string, passing over a smooth pulley. But this particle is on a table, say, horizontal table, and the, uh, the other particle just dangles over the edge. So at the pulley we have two forces coming from the strings, okay, the tension in the string. So we'll mark that in. We have one tension there, T newtons, and again we have a tension coming down here also of T newtons because it's a smooth pulley. These two tensions would want to pull the pulley along in this direction here, okay, down in this direction. But we know it doesn't move, okay, because there is a resultant force counteracting that, acting in the opposite direction, which I'm going to call R newtons. Now, these two T's, okay, because they're separated by an angle of 90 degrees, then we find that the resultant by symmetry acts directly through the middle of this angle. It cuts the angle in half. Well, if it's 90 degrees, we know that this angle in here must be 45 degrees. And again, this angle in here must be 45 degrees. So, to find the resultant of these two T's, which acts in this direction, okay, all I need to do is just to resolve in the direction of R, okay, of this R here, and what I will get is R minus, okay, the two components of these tensions that act in this downward direction. And the component of T that acts in this direction will be T cosine 45, 
or T cos 45 degrees for short. And then the component of this tension that acts in this downward direction would also be T cos 45. So it's minus T cos 45. This represents the overall force acting on the pulley, but because it's in equilibrium, there must be no resultant force, so it equals zero. And rearranging this equation gives R equals 2T cosine 45 degrees. And assuming that you know T from earlier calculations, just substitute it in here and you've got R. And the magnitude of R, OK, the force, in other words, that acts in this downward direction will be equal to 2T cos 45 because it will be equal and opposite to this R. OK, let's move on to my third and final example, a common one, and that is particles on an inclined plane. Here we have a particle on an inclined plane connected again by a string passing over what I'm going to assume is a smooth pulley. And so the forces on this pulley are the tensions coming from the string. So we have one down here, T newtons, and one down in this direction, also of T newtons. So these two forces from the strings, these two tensions, will want to pull the pulley down in this direction. So I'll just mark that in. So it would want to move in that direction. It doesn't because there is a third force acting equal and opposite up here, which I'm going to call R newtons. So if I want to find the resultant of these two tensions here, it will be equivalent to a force of magnitude R newtons acting in this direction. So all I need to do is find R and I have the magnitude of that force coming down through there, the resultant of those two tensions. Now, in most questions, you're going to be given the angle of the plane. So let's just imagine in this example, we say it's 20 degrees. And because this is 90 degrees, it means that this remaining angle in here will be 70 degrees. Now, by the symmetry of the problem, because these two tensions are the same, this dotted line will act halfway through this angle. It will cut the angle in half. So if we've got 70 degrees, it means that this angle round here is going to be 35 degrees. So just mark that on as 35 degrees. And it also means that this angle round here is going to also be 35 degrees. So to find R, what I'm going to do is simply resolve in the direction of R. That's outwards like that. And so resolving outwards, we've got all of R. And then we've got the components of the tension that act in this along this dotted line downwards. And so the component of T here in the downwards direction will be T cosine 35. It acts in the opposite direction to this arrow, so that'd be minus T cos 35 degrees. And also the component of T that acts along this dotted line downwards here would also be minus t cosine 35 degrees. This is the resultant force on the pulley, but it doesn't move. It's in equilibrium, so the resultant force should be zero. And again, if we rearrange this, we have that r equals 2t cosine 35 degrees. So all we need to do is just substitute for the tension in an earlier part of the problem in here and we've got what R is. So the magnitude will be this value and that will be the resultant force that, is, that comes from these two tensions. OK, so I hope you understand that and I'd like to think that these diagrams will be very similar to the ones that uh, you might encounter.